Greetings, truth seekers, paradigm busters, new world order, civil disobedience, freedom fighters, free thinkers, higher mammals, good people of all types. How's it going? My name is Michael Parker, and welcome to episode 12 of The Electric Pyramid, coming to you as always from an undisclosed location somewhere in Hollyweird, California. Today is Thursday, August the 14th, or perhaps it's the 15th, depending where you're at, and our guest is Wednesday the 13th. I don't know how that works out, but it's pretty cool. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been another... Uh, heavy week. I think I say that every week, but it always seems to be that way. And um, no matter how bad it was for you, if you'd been on Mount Sinjar or uh, perhaps on the bad streets of uh, Ferguson, Missouri, it could have been a lot worse. Um, obviously, the the death of Robin Williams this week was a, a tragic situation and made us all very, very sad and made us contemplate mortality and uh, the preciousness of life. And uh, if there's anything to be learned from that, and I know a lot has been said, so I won't, I won't beat you over the head with it too much, but a lot of us experience depression in our lives, and depression is a real thing. And sometimes artists feel it in a very heavy way, and they at least have a method by which they can transmute that into something. But even then, sometimes it becomes too much. And then the rest of us who are normal people, sometimes we don't have an outlet, so if we can take this moment to just remember, you know, you know what, hold the people that you love very tightly and hold on to your families, hold on to the things that you love and let a person like Robin Williams, who made a lot of people happy for a long time, be kind of a memorable note in your life that you don't want to leave others behind. So I just wanted to say that, um, because it's obviously been in front of everybody's face this week, and I've I've heard some really outrageous things as a result of it, coming from uh, guys like Rush Limbaugh and things like that, who don't think I guess that that depression is a real thing. It's a very real thing, and uh, it can be deadly. So I don't want to dwell on that. Um, our par- our purpose here at the Electric Pyramid is to bring you news that you don't hear so much, and perhaps sometimes to maybe put a smile on your face. And one of the things that I saw poking around today was uh, from my home state of Houston, Texas. On Monday night, there were UFO sightings. And if you go on the web and you just look up UFO Houston, and I think that Joe's going to drop it into the uh, chat room in a moment, you can okay. take a look at some... Uh, uh, footage that was shown on the local NBC affiliate, which was Channel 2. And at first, it looks pretty cool because you see this large circular spiral um, that seems to be turning uh, lights in the sky. And then, I guess the next day, um, some more footage showed, showed up. Not quite as impressive, but still pretty interesting. And I'll be honest, at first when I saw it, I was kind of like, ah, whatever. And then I started looking at it, and then I was kind of intrigued. And now I've kind of come to the feeling that it's probably a hoax. And the reason being, and Joe pointed some of this out to me as well, that some of the things don't look right. It almost could be reflections in glass, especially in the second footage where the guy's traveling. If you go onto those links, you'll see it. But um, what's cool about it is that, hey, man, hats off at least to the uh, the Houston media. They actually covered it. And usually when anything like this happens, people poo-poo it and think it's ridiculous. So I take my hat off to the NBC affiliate. They they actually put it on the air. They went and talked to people in the streets. Um, they had fun with it. But here's the deal. The reason I think it's probably a hoax is, and I'm not picking on, D- on the DJs of the world, but <laughs> the photos originally came from a DJ. And you might say, well, Michael, why the hate for the DJs? It's not hate, brother. It's just I'm wondering. I'm wondering if dude's got some gear, you know, that he's he's uh, you know putting putting some shows on in the sky. But I, I leave it up for up to you to decide. It put a smile on my face, and it was one of the few things that happened this week where I was kind of like, oh, well, that's fun. And uh, so I think Joe's put that in the uh, the chat room for you guys to check out. Speaking of Joe, Mr. Joe Kiernan, our producer, how are you? Excellent. How are you tonight, Michael? I'm doing all right, man. We got a big show tonight. We have uh, Wednesday 13 on. Rocking, awesome. I'm looking forward to it. It was good 13, 14, 15 analogy you threw in there. Yeah, it's a weird little uh, numerological thing, so uh, who Sounds knows what will me. happen. Sounds and, good. Yeah. And another strange thing I wanted to bring up uh, that I noticed, because one of the things that I'm very interested in is the idea of invasive species. And if you live in Florida, you already know this. Um, the Everglades in a lot of Florida has been 
largely overwhelmed with exotic pets that have uh, boa constrictors, anacondas, pythons, et cetera, where people, um, or at least the theory is, that people took these in as pets, and then at some point, you know, they thought they couldn't handle them, so they let them go. Well, the problem is, is that Florida in particular has a climate that is conducive to the propagation of these species. So they've got, you know, these exotic snakes all over Florida. Well, now I'm reading stories that um, at least in one lake in New Jersey, they've also found which, what looks to be like a 12-foot-long python. And uh, the reason this is significant to me is that these animals, and it's also the cover of mag- uh, Time magazine, I guess, two weeks ago. I've been following this for years because I think it's a big deal. But, um, you know, the animals did nothing wrong. They're, they're simply trying to exist. And yet, um, they're in a place where they don't belong. So these pythons, these anacondas, these boa constrictors, in some cases, they are the very top of the food chain, which then throws everything else out of whack. So we know that we've got them in Florida, and much has been said about that. We also have Nile monitors, we have iguanas, we have tegus, um, all kinds of uh, exotic pets taking over that state. But the deal is, these type of animals, um, you know, they can kill crocodiles. I mean, they are, the, they are apex predators. They are at the top of the, uh, the food chain. So this is a dangerous thing. And if they are also finding them in New Jersey, well, then on one hand, it could be just someone who, again, let go of it. Or it could be that these animals are spreading uh, up the coast and at least through the Gulf Coast as well. So I thought that was very interesting. If you, if you just go online and look at uh, New Jersey Python, I'm sure you'll find it. And then this past week, out here about 15 miles from where I live in Norwalk, California, there's uh, what appears to be a lion. Yes, I said lion, L-I-O-N, not mountain lion, but lion running around. There's actually footage of this. That at first, people were thinking, well, maybe it's a mountain lion or maybe it's a large dog. Um, but they had some animal control people come in and they said, I'll be damned, that, that looks like a lion. So that was I, a, a lion. A lion. Okay. Yes, they have, they have not caught it yet. It's in Norwalk, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. <laughs> and this thing's just out there prowling around, you know. I mean, Obviously, uh, lions are not indigenous to Southern California. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess the only reason I put this out here is because, ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking about getting some form of exotic pet, you know, think twice. I mean, go to the shelter, get a dog or a cat. I mean, all these people that go and get these exotic pets, then they can't handle them. Then they put them out. And the animal is just doing what the animal needs to do, which is continue to try to survive. And uh, so it, it's uh, it's an issue. Um it's a big deal. It's always on my mind because I love animals. And um, so I just wanted to bring those up. I thought it was Fair interesting. Enough. Yeah. And, well, that's, um, that snake won't make it through the winter in, in New Jersey. Well, see, that's – If it heads to the a part, bad part of town, it won't make it through summer. <laughs> brother, I hear – or Bon Jovi might kill it. Who knows? Right on. Right um, on. But, but my point is and, – and you, and you make a very valid point. A lot of people are saying, hey, we hope it doesn't make it through the winter. But here's the deal. The, you know, these are intelligent reptiles, and uh, you know what? it's going to do what it needs to do to, it, to survive. So it might find a barn or something hopefully they can hole up in. Regardless, uh, the numbers for – these types of exotic snakes in Florida are just unbelievable. I mean, I, we're talking, I think, probably in the several hundred thousands at this point. So uh, it's a real thing, and uh, it's not the animal's fault, but it exists. And uh, we're being taken over by large exotic snakes. At least it's exotic, man. <laughs> at least they're exotic. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me tell you what we got going on tonight. Let's do it. Um, I had the, uh, the, the pleasure of uh, meeting somebody earlier this week and uh, their management had contacted the show and uh, we knew each other prior and uh, the artist that this person manages is Wednesday 13 who is our guest tonight and we had talked about getting Wednesday on the show because as it turns out Wednesday shares some of the same interests that I do and uh, I was like yeah I'd love to have him on the show and um, Wednesday is a musician who's been doing rock and roll since the early 90s He's had several bands. Um, I had the privilege of seeing him, God, it was probably three years ago here in L.A. Cool. At that point, he was doing uh, Gunfire, and uh, I saw him at, uh, at the Whiskey. But you'll probably know him better under his, uh, his moniker, Wednesday 13, or perhaps the Murder Dolls, which is one of the bands he did with uh, Jordison from uh, 
from Slipknot. Regardless, he is an excellent musician, a really smart guy, a really cool guy. And uh, we got to have a drink and talk the other night about some things. And so he's going to be on the show tonight, and we're going to talk about his new record that he just announced yesterday and some of the things that are on his mind. And before we bring him on, bring him on just in case you're not aware of his music, I'd like to play a cut that comes off of his uh, most recent album, which is called Undead Unplugged, which I believe came out in July. And I was scanning through the record, and, and one of these songs that uh, really kind of poked out to me and I thought was apropos for the evening is Welcome to the Strange. Welcome to the Strange. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Strange, Wednesday 13. Hello, Wednesday. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, brother. 
Oh, good. I am, I am so dumb with Skype. <laughs> <laughs> it's like making all these noises, and I'm like staring at my computer, and like your guys' images of your whatever your screen picture is, just keeps <laughs> popping around, and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were in and out. <laughs> Perfect introduction. Welcome to the strange. I was like, well, really, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still getting used to Skype as well, but at least we can like do interviews like this because uh, at one point, I mean, hell, if we weren't all in the same studio or, or at least a couple of us were in a studio and somebody was on the phone, I couldn't have pulled it off. But uh, you know, thank God for, for Skype. But it is a little sketchy sometimes. Yes, yes. Well, this is, this is the day and age where studios are, are not needed. You can do it in your house. You can do it wherever you want, and that's what's awesome. So. It's not great. You just send, yeah. us, send you the file off. Yeah, you got to deal with it sometimes. So that's yeah. uh, that's part it's part of the process. Wednesday, um, you know, I was telling the telling the audience a few minutes ago that I had the pleasure of meeting you the other night. Man, we had a great time, and uh, yeah. you're a you're a really smart guy with a lot going on, man. And <laughs> um, well, thank you. I was already aware of your music, and uh, but I was not aware that you had certain interests and uh, we were talking about a lot of different things and you told me you were going to get ready to uh, release a new album which you announced yesterday which we're going to have a lot of time to talk about tonight and you'd also kind of explain to me that some of the ideas for the new album are a result of some of the things that have been on your mind and uh, I guess I wanted to go back a few years Yes, um, you told me that you had been in Tokyo at the time of that large earthquake, which ended up uh, being the, the Fukushima, you know, disaster as well. And I was just wondering, you know, tell me about that. And, and did that kind of mess with your head a bit? Well, yeah, I mean, we met up the other night. Of course, we just kind of went into a whirlwind of conversations. Yep. And it was like, by the time we realized it was like one, almost one o'clock. We're like, oh, that's shit. true. You know, <laughs> and uh, so that's just the topic. You know, we just went on every topic of everything. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, and you ask, you know, and I, I kind of told you in my background, I was like, look, I was like, you know, I've, as a kid, you know, I've been into, you know, weird things like like Bigfoot and, you know, like UFOs, whatever was weird in the library, the library sure. you could check out. But uh, but either way, uh, but but going to the when I told you I said when I really got into this stuff was after the earthquake that happened in 2011, and uh, so it, so I, I was telling you about it. But but what I didn't what I didn't, I didn't tell you, Michael, was was uh, the the day that we arrived in Tokyo, we got there at like I want to say like 7 a.m. in the morning. We had that we had that day off, and then the fo- and then we had a show in Tokyo uh, the following day, and then the earthquake happened the next day. And we had a day right. off. So what what I didn't tell you about was there was two earthquakes. Uh, so either way, we we get off the airplane at like seven in the morning, and we we finally get to the hotel. I want to say it like it was like nine or nine thirty in the morning, and we're on the eighteenth floor of of this really nice hotel in the middle of in the center of Tokyo. Um, and uh, and I remember you know I, I don't sleep really well on on, on flights, and I'll get. I'll tell you more about about that later, uh, but I don't really sleep that well. So, so you know, so the whole flight here was like, or the flight to Japan was was a long flight. So we get off the off the plane and we get to the to the hotel. And uh, I remember I, I shared a room with, with our guitar player Ramon, and uh, uh, we were on the 18th floor, and we were just you know we just we just basically just kind of passed out, and our what well, we had just got off the airplane just passed out on the beds. Sure. And uh, and I remember hearing this really loud noise that sounded like this, like a. Like a, just a like a squeaking like a rocking chair, you know, like an old mm-hmm. lady in a rocking chair. And I remember just kind of laying there, like, oh, like what the fuck? And I just it it just it, it you know it it, it was it, and it got loud. And I just kind of set up and I went, what the fuck? And I I ran over to the to the window and I opened the 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 the, the, the curtain. We're on the 18th floor and I'm like I'm just staring out, looking over because I thought in my head I thought someone was cleaning the, like cleaning the window, right. It was that kind of squeaky sound, and uh, I look out and there's nothing there, and I'm like, you know, I, and I'm I'm jet lagged, I'm just just kind of confused, no sleep, whatever, and uh, so I, I I go and lay back down in the bed, and I'm like, and and then it just hits me, and I go, earthquake, yep, you know what the hell, you know, and uh, so I I I I, I turn on the uh, I, I turn on the TV, and everything's in Japanese. There's no American like you know English speaking stations. And I just see like uh, in the corner this red like dot like glowing and a bunch of things going on and I was like that's exactly what it was. It was an earthquake and we just kind of laughed about it. And I was like, man, here we are. We're you know we're we're we're, we're 
in Tokyo for two hours as an earthquake, and I made a <laughs> And I, I, I made a joke on a, on a, on a, on a, a, I think an Australian interview a couple months prior to that, and there was something about a, a volcano maybe going off in, in, in Japan around that time. That, and, right. and I made a joke. I was like, oh, yeah, the murder dolls are coming to Japan, and, and just in time for that, for that volcano, we travel with, with – you know, and I made the joke about we travel – Lots with, of pyro. <laughs> with, with, with natural disasters. You know? we, don't, we don't use pyro. We travel with natural disasters like hurricanes and earthquakes. Right. And I made a joke about that. So, uh, so either way, so like, uh, yeah. Uh, so that was the, that's the part I didn't tell you about, Michael. So, uh, so we, we 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 played our show the next day in Tokyo, and uh, it was it was a great show. I mean, it was just I I love Japan. I love our fans there. I I wish I I, I wish we could have finished that tour. But uh, uh, so so we do the we do our that's, that's our first Murder Doll show since two thousand three, I believe. You know, so we had a lot of fans there, really excited about it. It was, it was a great show. It was sold out. And after the show, it was our it was our drummer's birthday, like 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 at midnight, which is mm-hmm. which is March 11th. It was you know it hit that, and we yeah. we went out and we had like karaoke and just had a good time. And uh, you know, so the the very next day, um, the day, the day of the earthquake, uh, we had a day off, and I'd you know been fortunate enough to be uh, actually to, to travel to to Tokyo and be touring there for all these years, and I kind of knew the area. And me being the world class traveler that I am, I wanted to go and you know eat Japanese cuisine. So I was looking for a TGI Fridays, <laughs> as you do. Yes, and uh, you know, so I knew there was a Fridays. I knew it was right across the street from the ESP store, uh, which is our, which is my my my, my guitar uh, company that we're that we uh, we've been with for years. And uh, um, and I knew there was a Tower Records really close by. So I Perfect. you know, so I was like, all right, day off. Great show last night. It's the you know we 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 had three shows left or, or two shows left. I knew I was going home and we we'd, we'd been touring a lot and uh, you know I was excited to get home. So I was like, all right, I'm you know this day I'm gonna you know I, I couldn't wait for the rest of the band to wake up. I got I was excited. I got up. I went to Tower Records. Um, I bought a Killing Joke uh, uh, CD. I bought a Excellent. Gigi Allen CD and uh, and I then I went to TGI Fridays. And I was really excited because in, in Japan at the time, TGI Friday still had the fried macaroni and cheese bites. <laughs> and, they, and they had canceled them in America, and I was really bummed. And I was like, yes, they got them. I got to go. <laughs> What's more American than that? Exactly. And uh, so, so I, go, I go to TGI Fridays, and this TGI Fridays is on like the fourth floor. So I, you know, I go up there by myself, and uh, you know, it's like around, I, I want to say like 1 o'clock maybe. I'm guessing. I don't know when the earthquake hit, but I'm, I'm thinking it's like 1 o'clock because I wouldn't have been right. up that super early. I was excited, but not that excited. We get yeah. up before noon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sitting there, and uh, you know, I order the food, and I'm sitting there by myself, and I'm just kind of looking at the CD, checking out my Killing Joke CD, you know, and uh, – uh, and I and I text my girlfriend and I'm like, hey, I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey, it's awesome at TJ Fries. I still got these macaroni and cheese bites. I'm so excited. Uh, you know, I just got this really cool import, uh, like Japanese import Killing Joke CD. And uh, I was like, man, this day is just it couldn't get any better. And I, and I, I took a picture, you know, of of my food when because it just got there and and what I just bought from Tower Records. And I just sent that picture to my girlfriend. And uh, and then all of a sudden I felt like this kind of shake. And you know, I was like, well, what the hell is that? You know, and I and and then I look up and I see this uh, I, I see this girl at the end of the bar, and she just kind of starts, you know, kind of going, oh yay, yay, earthquake, yay. And then it went from like kind of like funny for a second to like super violent. And wow. um, and where I was sitting, I was like, I, I feel like I mean, again, this is all what I've said in my head, and I kind of in my memory, I could be totally wrong, but this is this is my, this is my story of what I remember in my head. Understood. I prob- you know, I was probably like you know, like four or five feet, maybe from from the window. It looked out on the fourth floor, and I remember the the building swaying because the building hit me in the side of my arm and knocked me to the center of the bar. My God. And and at that point, it was just like, you know, you look around. I'm I'm in a foreign country, you know, for for me, and I'm 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 looking around. and I see people just terrified. And I just, you know, and, and just in my head, I just kind of felt like this deafening kind of just, I don't know what the, how to explain it, but I heard this like kind of ear piercing, this high pitched noise in my ear, like, hey, you need to get the hell out of here. You're going to die, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, and, and just to, and just to give you an example, like, you know, the, this TGI Fridays had like all their like, 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 uh, like 
their glasses and things like hanging above, like over their heads. Sure, over the, yeah. Service work, you know, like it was like, and they could just like, they were like, you know, they were being flashy. It was a, you know, it was a tour, it was a tourist place. So they had like yeah. the, the, you know, the bartenders that could do their tricks and they could rip, you yeah. know, flip over their head. So, but all that, all that stuff was just falling on the floor. You know, it was just scary, you know. So, so I grabbed my jacket and my phone and I, and I run to the door and, I grab and it's this huge, big, like wooden door, and I, you know, and and I grab the the side that I, you know it didn't say like, you know, pull on this side or open, push forward. It just, you know, I just grab this door, and I realize I'm grabbing at, at like the the hinge side, mm-hmm. and I and I'm putting my foot on the door. I'm like, why won't this door open? Is this some kind of earthquake protective <laughs> thing? Are we not supposed to get outside? And I'm just realize I'm just an idiot. I'm grabbing like the wrong side of the door. Trying. Well, to- you're in panic mode too. Yeah, you know, and people are trying to get out of the door, and this one guy, like, he, he looks at me, and he goes, you know, hey, <laughs> over here, idiot. You know, so so he opens the door, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I hop down four flights of stairs, and I always compare it to that old uh, that old Atari game, Qbert, where I just hop down the, the block, because yep. I didn't even use yep. the steps. I hopped from, like, one block to one block. I was out in, like, four steps. You know, because I just want to get down the street. I thought I'd be safer, but I I couldn't have been more wrong because when I got out on the streets, you know, it was so it was the it was so intense that you re- you couldn't stand up. Like you had to like, and, and I I told you, Michael, I showed I demonstrated for you. You had to I had to yeah. stand like I was on a surfboard. Yeah. You know, to catch my balance, and I just looked up in the skyline. You know, I'm just you know they're surrounded by buildings and everything, and the buildings just look like taffy. It was like rubber. You know, just swaying back and forth, and uh, and then this is like a Godzilla movie without the lizard. Yeah, you know, and then it just it stops, just stops, and it's just dead silent. And you know, I'm like, I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, it, because the way it felt, I mean, it 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 felt like everything should have been demolished. That's how mm-hmm. intense it felt, but it wasn't. You know, I didn't see any type of broken glass around me. I didn't hear anything shattering. I didn't hear anything like that. Um, you know, so I'm, so, so either way I, I, so the earthquake stops, I look up and I'm right across the street from, uh, the ESP guitar store, which is the Japanese ESP store. And I see our, I see two of the guys that work for murder dolls, our, our, our two guitar techs. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm terrified, you know, I'm already pale, but I'm like, I'm in like super, <laughs> like I'm terrified. And and I see the two dudes and I'm like and I walk over to them and they're just kind of like Wednesday Wednesday calm down I'm like where's where's my calm friend? down you know like but they they were calm they that's the crazy thing they were calm <laughs> you know they were kind of like oh good on them you know it was like hey we came to Japan this is kind of cool we got you know I was kind of like no this ain't cool at all where's Not my at friends? All. are they on the are they on the 18th floor because this feels like this thing would have demolished it you know wow. that was the knowledge in my head mm-hmm. then, you know. It just felt like everything should have been demolished because I watch a lot of movies. You know, when a car crashes, like, oh, it's going to blow up. Get out. Sure. It's that kind of mentality. So either way, I'm, 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 a, I'm a couple blocks away from where the hotel was. So um, I start walking with I, – I, I think I started walking with those guys. I can't remember. I was in panic mode. So I, I walk. I'm, I'm on my phone. I'm trying to, trying to text my girlfriend like, oh, my God, this is insane. You know, I can't believe this has happened. So I get to the um, I, I, I get to this the the center block right where our, where our, our hotel was and and I'm probably exaggerating on the number um, but this intersection like this is this huge intersection it would be like being like in Times Square in New York mm-hmm. you know I don't know how many people cross the street there but it just looks like thousands of people you know what sure. I mean like this is it's a lot of people there so I'm at this um, you know I'm at this intersection and first off I'm not going in that in that hotel. <laughs> so you know, so I'm like, all right, I'm 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 hoping my guys got out. I'm hoping they're outside. I'm looking around, and I, I'm like, you know, so I'm, I'm at the at the corner before I walk walk across the street. And normally I can look for my band because we're a bunch of weirdos. We got black hair, and you know, but I'm in Japan and everybody's got black hair, right? <laughs> and I'm at that intersection. I'm like, man, I'm like super screwed here. I can't find my band, and. And then the and then like the green lights go and everyone starts crossing the street and I'm like all right I guess I'm gonna have to walk in there and go in this in this hotel I'm terrified to go up and I'm afraid it's gonna happen again there's aftershocks, you know and uh and then right when I look up or or I just I'm looking around and I and I hear uh I I hear 
our guitar player whistle. And it really, and he's just got this really distinctive, like it just cuts through. It's just ear piercing. And I see him. And plus he has, he has half of a haircut. So, mm-hmm. it's, <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, there he is. So I, I find the band. They tell me where, where, where they were during the whole thing. We kind of exchange stories real quick. And we're like, man, that's crazy. And I feel like I'm like in more panic mode than everyone else. I mean, our, our, our drummer was like super terrified. He's probably as, as scared as I was, but everyone still was not being like, okay, maybe this, you know, we're, we're not dead. Okay. I hope right. that's, that's it. And then, uh, you know, it, there was no aftershock. So it was almost to the point where, you know, everyone was like, uh, well, all right, well, I'm going to go eat. I'm hungry. You know, everyone was hung over from, from our, from the party, you know, and sure. it was like, everyone's like, all right, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to get food. So I'm like, okay. Uh, cause no one was really, I don't feel like everyone, everyone was freaked out as, as bad then, you know? And, um, but, but I still hadn't found two of our, two, two of our people in our, in our crew and, and everything. So I was still worried about that. And, um, but either way, this is, this is how I remember it in, in my head. And uh, and then once once they left again, I remember it was like me and our one of our guitar techs. He walked in this jewelry store, and we're like looking at necklaces and weird stuff. And you know the way that earthquake hit for you know even I don't know how long it, the first initial one was. It felt like forever. I'm sure it wasn't, but it just kind of still made you feel like you were shaken for you know even after it stopped. Mm-hmm. So I'm in there and I'm staring at jewelry and I'm looking at it and I'm like that jewelry's moving. They're like. No, it's not. I'm like, oh, it's boy. moving, and they're like, "You're crazy." And right when they said you're crazy, it was again, and it was another. You know, and every aftershock. This is a nine nine point three, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's what it was considered uh, one of the most five powerful earthquakes yes, in history. That's since, correct since 1900, and uh, you know, so it just it, it you know I I I I run outside again, and just everyone's in panic mode. So. I, I'm a, I don't know what the aftershock was, but it wasn't far below the 9.3. It was another huge one, and it shook the whole place. And I remember running to that same intersection where I was looking for the band again because it was the only place that you kind of felt like you maybe had a run and start if a building was falling towards you. Mm-hmm. Because I just, you know, I've just watched so many movies. Sure. I don't really, I didn't know that. You know, I mean, I, I'd heard that, you know, they'd built buildings on these rollers and things like that and all that. You know, they're made for that kind of thing. But I'm just expecting the worst. I've watched too many dumb B movies and things like that. But I, I actually have a video and I found it on my computer recently of, of me recording that last earthquake. And I'm standing at, the, at that same intersection just to give you an idea of just how, how devastating that the ground was moving was. There was a building that was uh, in in construction across from that intersection, and it had to be. I mean, it, it towered our hotel. We were on a twenty five story hotel, so it's fifty stories or whatever. It's huge, and there's a crane on top of it, and the crane, uh, the 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 wire and the hook off the off the crane, was spinning in a complete circle. Wow, that can't be safe. You know, so and I remember, and 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 I have myself on the video. For like ten seconds, talking like, "Hey, uh, I'm in Tokyo. Uh, There's a really horrible earthquake, and I'm scared." And then you hear the siren go off, and then you just, and then I just see my hand just kind of drop, you know, because I just remember, and that was when it kind of dawned on me that that section, I just, and that's when I went into complete panic mode. I'm like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here. I don't know what's going on. I am terrified. I don't know anything about what's going on." I don't know anything about earthquakes. This is, can't speak this, Japanese. This is terrifying, you know. I mean, I, I have some friends, l- luckily there, you know, that 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 do speak, you know, that you know that I can hang out with. So I never have that problem of ever, you know, usually. But I, they weren't there with me at the time. Mm-hmm. So either way, it's just a million things going through my head, and I'm just thinking the worst, you know, like man, we're gonna die here. What's what the hell is going on? So, uh, so so either way. Um, you know the earth, the the aftershocks just started. You know they started getting less and less and less. But at this point, you know my my anxiety. I already have it, like really bad anxiety and and everything. You know, so it's like it's just through the roof. So anytime it even remotely shakes, it feels as bad as the first one to me. I understand. You know, and uh, and and we and we finally found a bar that uh, was on like the second or third floor that had internet access. So we're all in there on our phones. You know, trying to call everybody and. Um, you know, and, and, and I remember like, uh, there was a television and I have this on video too on my computer. I have a television that I'm, I'm watching 
And I remember watching the first huge tsunami wave that they videotaped from yep. uh, from one of the aerial views. Yep. And knowing that, and, and they were saying this is 200 miles from Tokyo. That doesn't sound far to me. No, I, mean, I, I, I travel a lot. We're like, oh, how, how far is the next venue? 200 miles, whatever. We got that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. right. just a so, couple hours. Well, whatever you know, so, but you know, but the but you when you saw this huge wave, I mean, it was they probably don't, they don't show this this image anymore because it was it was bad, you know. I mean, you could see houses, cars, yeah, yeah. people, just you know, I mean, it was this huge wave, and I'm just like, oh, how long is until that's here? Sure. You know, I, I don't know, you know, and I'm I'm flipping out, and uh, so so basically we uh, we got we got stuck there for. A day and a half, two days. I don't know. It felt like it felt longer. Maybe it was maybe it was two days because there was no flights out, and um, and we we basically we, we got we got stuck there. And uh, so for for those days that we were there, my brain was just you know I was just I couldn't get it out of I couldn't I couldn't think positive. I was just like other than just I want to get out of here. Sure. You know you know and I'm here here I'm thinking oh you know. I want to get out of here. Not thinking, you know, I'm, and then I'm thinking, well, what about the people that live here? You know, this is just, this is just so horrible. I just, I don't understand where I'm at. I want to get out. So, so once we, we finally got out of there, the, the two days later, whatever it was, um, and that, and that long flight home, I didn't sleep the whole time we were there after the earthquake. I thought I'd get on that airplane. I thought I would just pass right out, but no, all I did was just think about it. And, you know, and, uh, when I came home from that, from that uh, that whole thing, it was like, you know, probably I counted it was probably at least at least six to eight months that I had the post post traumatic, you know, just everything from that. Like everywhere I I went, I felt like things were shaking in my apartment building. If I go to my elevator, um, you know, I it just for some, you know, I I always ask my girlfriend. I go, did you feel that? Did you feel that? And she's like, no, you're all right, you're cool. And it's like. You know, I couldn't shake it out of my head for yeah. for a long time, and and I still have effects of that now. I mean, I still and uh, even some of the, even the guys in the band, we still talk about it all the time. We we always feel it in my apartment building in that same part. We're like, man, mm-hmm. that's messed up. So I, yeah. it's just something I can't get out of my head, or I couldn't get out of my head. So when when I came back from that, that's when it just you know I I was like, you know what, you know that 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 freaked me out. I felt like this hillbilly in a foreign country. I didn't know anything except to tell you, you know, I could tell you every, every Friday the 13th movie sure. <laughs> or I could tell you every, every, every Alice Cooper record that was ever released, yep. you know, but I, I, I don't know anything else. I didn't, I didn't really, you know, I didn't pay attention that much. So when I came back, I guess my whole mindset was, I don't, I don't ever want to be in that situation again and not know what's going on. So when I came back, um, I really just started. Uh, I, I started watching the Ancient Alien show. Mm-hmm. Just you know, I yep. the, I'm buying off thing. I started watching that, and that really just in, intrigued me. And I was just like, "Wow, why, why weren't we taught this stuff in school? You know, well, yep. this, this stuff is way cooler than Stonehenge." Now, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not discrediting Stonehenge, but no, you know, there's just things that's just like, "Whoa, this is bizarre!" Like, why we've never heard about this? You know. Why did I think Tesla was a rock band for a long time? Exactly. I know. I know. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, why aren't we talking about that? You know, he's he destroys Edison. Absolutely. You know what I and, mean? And, it's like, and, and you know what? And you know what? I mean, they, I mean, even Einstein said that Tesla. You know, somebody asked Einstein at one point, "Hey, what is it like to be a genius?" He says, "I don't know." Ask Tesla. <laughs> I think that. Well, I think they said, "What's it like to be the smartest man in the world?" He said, "I don't know." Ask Tesla. Right. <laughs> so again, you know, it's like so. So I come back. I start watching Ancient Aliens. You know, that kind of that kind of turned the uh, that kind of turned the, the 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 light on in my head. Sure. And you know, and being that when I'm not on tour, you know, fortunately, you know, I I'm able to, you know, I, I tour so much except for this year. I took this year off. Um, you know, I'm able to. Um, hang around and, and, and spend a lot of time, you know, like watching videos or reading books or just investigating stuff, you know, not that I'm writing a book or anything, but like, I feel like I've done <laughs> so much research on things that I, I could write a book on the things that I, I've learned about. But uh, either way, I just started, the ancient aliens turned that little switch on in my head. I started investigating things and I started seeing people on the show 
uh, you know, and I was like, oh, that guy, you know, he said something that sparked interest in me. Let me let me check yes. him. Out. So I type his name into YouTube, and here I am watching watching a uh, a, a Jim Mars video or a yep. Jim Mars thing for three weeks, and I because I love you know, Jim. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, yeah. Jim Jim is awesome. But I'll end up spending three weeks watching that, and then I'll see another guy, you know, or watching Giorgio, and then I'll watch yeah. I'll watch him on there and watch his his you know his YouTube videos that go way back, and just you can find. So it just here I am finding all these different stories and just, you know, and then once I start hearing all this stuff, then I start sitting back and I start going, start thinking back to when I was a kid and going, all right, well, that makes, that didn't, didn't make sense to me then. But now if you put it together what I know now, it kind of, you know, it's just so many crazy coincidence and it's just uh and you you didn't come from a religious background at all i don't think right no, at all i mean honestly this is this is my religious background i can break it down pretty simple i'm from north carolina i'm from a little tiny town called china grove mm-hmm. this is where my family still lives right now and i lived i lived there up until four years ago not um, the doobie brothers song no no but it, but i always say that when i say china grove and people right. go still to this people you know younger people go what yeah <laughs> who the hell's the doobie brothers <laughs> So either way, um, you know, um, you know, my 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 mother and father, I have a great relationship. Uh, always have, you know. I have a brother and sister. I have a, I have a, I have a big family, but I don't know all my family. If that makes Understood. sense, like, you know, yes. I'm just really close with my brother, sister, yeah. my mother and father, and um, you know, they they never they never forced religion on me. They never, um, but it was always implied that that was the code of the road or that was the way it was, you know, sure. we had like a little coffee table in our little, our little tiny trailer that we had. And we had this gigantic Bible and my mom and still has this Bible to this day, this enormous Bible. And in the center of the Bible, she has my little baby curl that she cut off of my head and my little blonde baby curl, which I always called right my, on. I always called that my Superman curl. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I would always, you know, this coffee table is right in front of the TV. So I was always, you know, watching the tv but i had to sit right in front of that gigantic bible and i would always just like this so it was in your presence yes constantly but i was like man this thing's creepy yeah <laughs> not only is it enormous but it's creepy yeah you know because yeah. this is a really weird i, I, I want to say this this bible had a holographic jesus like when you looked at it from two different angles awesome you know, <laughs> it, goes, it goes from looking sad to sadder yeah <laughs> yeah you He's know, watching me all over the place. Yeah, you know, I used to sit there and I would, you know, I would, you know, my mom would let me eat in front of the TV. So we'd like slide the Bible to the side and I would eat yeah. macaroni and cheese and fried chicken and watch the Three Stooges and Bugs Bunny and, 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 <laughs> and whatever else. I mean, I was obsessed with television, you know, like, and uh, either way. So the, the religious, the religious aspect of it, um, you know, it was in my presence, but, I, and, and also I remember this too in my neighborhood, some of my earliest memories, I remember, remember seeing a, a church bus that would come by on Sundays and would pick and would pick up kids and I was like, why is why is school running today? And my mom she's like, oh no, that's the church church bus. I'm like, well I want to go. And she's like, no, no, I you know, I'm not getting on that I'm not I'm not letting you get on that bus. My mom was so protective. Yeah. Not that she was protective of me finding out about religion. She just didn't want me to get on a bus because she thought some kid might hit me in the head or something. She just protected Understood. Yep. You know what I mean? So it was like I was protected in that way, and my parents worked so much and had to work so hard to get even what we had because you know they supported my, me and and my sister and my brother and you know and it was just you know we didn't have a lot of money so uh, so it was it was uh, you know so uh, it was like they didn't go to church like Saturday and Sunday was a day for them to catch their breath. I hear you. So they didn't go to church on Sunday, but they weren't against it. Sure. So it was kind of like you know, all I was ever really taught was, oh, you can't, you can't do that. You'll go to hell, or sure. don't, don't, don't say the f word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, yeah. am, am I allowed? To, am I allowed to curse on this on this show? Because I'm really restraining myself. No, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'm, I'm going to back off. Because you, my, my you've mother's used all. I think you've burned up your free passes for the night. All right. All right. Well, I. I well, good because my mother's probably listening. So I will, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize for any f f bombs. 
No worries. Right. But okay, so let, so let me back up a little bit because when you told me this, this story the other night, I mean, I, I was moved by it. It's like, hey, I, you know, I'm from Texas. I grew up in a very similar background as you. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, and I was here for the Northridge quake, and it was a gigantic thing to me, man, and it blew my mind. And uh, when you told me that it had such an effect on you, and as a result of that, you know, you started educating yourself and reading up on things. I, I thought that was I thought that was really cool, and. When I the next day I was thinking about our interview, I was like, man, we got to tell that story because I think some of your audience might wonder, well, like, why would he even be interested in some of these subjects that we're probably going to get into in the second hour? But when you face your own mortality and you face um, a situation or you face nature in such an enormous magnitude and you might die, you start, you become a bit more philosophical. Absolutely. You Did know? you? Yeah, and and that was you know again I don't want I don't want to get into this but maybe I don't know we had a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about tonight but yeah. uh, that was like my my third my third brush with death in a very short time <laughs> wow uh, so that and maybe that's another thing that sparked it as well I I, uh, I was in a car accident in in two thousand seven I flipped my car five I always say five times I really don't know that's like a guess okay. it just felt like a lot because I held onto the wheel and just went. Oh, um, O S O S O S O S. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know, so and if you would have seen that car and seen what it looked like, and I and I and I walked away with a broken collarbone and a and a fractured ankle, and uh, and then uh, and then in 2010, um, I had been on a bunch of. I told you I was already on. I had a lot of really bad anxiety. Uh, you know, during that earthquake, but uh, so I was on a lot of a lot of in, a lot of anxiety pills uh, leading up to uh, 2010, and uh, due to some circumstances, I won't say it was not me, but uh, someone took my uh, my anxiety pills from me and made me just kind of quit, kind of cold turkey, Holy and uh, I didn't realize, you know, again, that's not that's I, not I, safe. Yeah, I didn't know. You can't stop that stuff, and I basically no. went into a complete like freak out detox and I didn't yeah. sleep I didn't sleep for six days and um I never I never taken L S D in my life or any type of hallucination drugs. Um but I can tell you the things I saw by that fifth or sixth day by not sleeping were things I could write horror movies about for years. And uh you know, so that was something that was in my head too because I didn't sleep for six six days and we had our you know and, and this Thing also led up to the very first murder doll show we had we had had done in like eight years. So I had this. I was going through this <laughs> drug detox mm -hmm. and had to play our, and had to be the front guy for the new murder dolls. And you know, and I was terrified that I was going to die on stage. And uh, so yeah, so I've had a couple of you know that's been my 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 three skates with uh, with death. And uh, well, that's plenty. And, and I and I think that's what opened up the uh, Pandora's box, if you will. I get it, ladies and gentlemen. We're speaking with Wednesday thirteen, and I promise you, in the second hour, we're going to talk more about the record. Um, but I wanted to get this story out because I was touched by it. I was very impressed by it. Um, it's a hell of a story. I mean, if, if you if you don't remember the March eleventh, uh, I think they call it Tahuka or Toka. I, it's not the Tokyo earthquake. It's not the Fukushima earthquake. There's a name for it. Regardless, um, this was the fifth largest earthquake on record. This is the thing that caused the Daiichi Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster that we are still wrestling with, which who knows if this is going to amount to you know, a near extinction level event at some point. But this was a huge thing. And um, the fact that it made Joe, our, our Wednesday, deal with so many issues, I, I found very interesting. So in the second hour, we're going to talk about the new record that he announced yesterday, um, how some of these things play into that, uh, what all he's been reading, uh, what's what's he intrigued by these days. And uh, so I promise we're going to get around to that. It might seem like we're taking forever to get to the to the rock and roll, but but there is a method to the madness. Wednesday, yes, did did you ever get the mac and cheese balls that day? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I I think I got to have like maybe two bites. Oh man, and it was kind of like. Uh, but you know what was weird? This is how much of a of a southern gentleman I am. I went back in and paid my bill. There you You're go. The man. You're the man. And, and and I went back in, and uh, also and also because I left my Kelly joke. See, well, <laughs> I was like, man, are they gonna make me pay? Because I think that's grounds for a free meal. 
Absolutely. But, I'm like, but, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I paid and I, I got out, but, uh, yeah. So when you guys were getting ready to leave, um, when they would finally let you fly out, I mean, was that, uh, cause I, I mean, if there were several days, there were several days of aftershocks and, but you guys still got to leave reasonably quickly afterwards. It was only a couple of days, right? Yeah. But you know, man, I mean, I mean, again, I, I've been, been fortunate enough to go to Japan several times with tours over the years and bands I've been in. And, uh, you know, th- that's an awesome place. You know, that's a place that does it. It, it, it doesn't close. You know, I've right. seen I've seen businessmen at 6 a.m. And I mean, they, they have happy hours at like 4 a.m., 4 to 6, wow. you know, at these places. I've seen businessmen so hammered that they handcuff their briefcases to their arms and they're wow. like in three piece suits just passed out in a pile of their own vomit. This is a <laughs> this is a party town. But when that happened, ghost town. I mean, just imagine Ghost Town and, and, and Times Square. That's what I, if you've never been to Japan, but if you've been to Times Square, it's just like that little section was just Ghost Town. And, and one of the biggest cities in the world. Yeah, and there are people that, like, in the lobby of our, our, our hotel was like a hotel on top of, like, a, like a mall or t- some type of mall structure. So we were even higher up in the air than we were on the eighth day floor, you know yeah. what I mean? But, uh, but I remember there were people just sleeping on the floor. You know, that couldn't get in rooms or, or, you know, it was just like, it was sad, man. It was like, it was a real deal. And I remember like, I luckily had internet connection with my Blackberry at the time. And, 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 uh, I had my computer and I, we found internet access at a bar across the street that was only on like the second floor. Um, you know, and, uh, and I was able to, to talk back to my family and, uh, friends and things like that. And, uh, you know, and and this is another thing too. This is what this makes sense. I'm on the show and talking about conspiracies and things. I remember being in Japan and watching the news, and then hearing and seeing online what was being reported in America on yeah. CNN and the you know the main media channels. Yeah, and it was and you know, it was just like they were hyping it up like, you know, not that it wasn't bad, but like it was just so opposite of what was actually going on. In and, what respect? Well, just I, I don't I don't remember because it, again you have to understand I wasn't really into like taking you know going oh this doesn't make sense I just remember I, right. I looked on Facebook you know how Facebook has that thing now where you can go back and look at what sure. you were doing in in 2011 and I but think, your experience uh, wasn't the same as what we were being shown over here exactly. is what you're saying exactly and I remember yeah. I remember this triggered in my head I don't know what it was exactly that said it off but there's a Facebook post that I made and I say and and I'm pissed off in it and I go and I go uh, hey um, you know, if you guys want to know what's really going on, ask any of us. Don't watch mm-hmm. CNN. And I was really mad about it. And I was, and, I, yeah. and so it was just like it was a different angle of what they were painting versus what was going on actually there. I, I get it. Um, well, and that's that's how they make the news, and that's you one know, of the yeah, exactly. And and I couldn't remember if it was for the better or for the worse. I just this this was so many so many emotions going through my head there, you know. And I feel like I've have this painted picture in my head and I, and I hope I have it right. But again, it was this panic and, and fear and just not knowing what was going on. And like I said, when I, when I got out of there, that was just like, all right, I don't ever want to be in that situation again where I'd feel so clueless and, and just not knowledge about what's going on. So I want to educate myself and as much as I can. You probably had some survivor guilt as well because, I mean, you mentioned something earlier where you actually got to, you know, you you were going to get to fly out of there. As bad as you wanted to go, you still, you know, you're like, well, I get to go, but these people have to stay here. So, you know, you were probably dealing with that a little bit as well. So I know we're coming up on a break here shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking with Wednesday 13. Um, We're going to talk about his new album on uh, the other side. We're going to be talking about... uh, A lot of wild and crazy things. I hope you'll stick around. My name is Michael Parker. This is The Electric Pyramid. We will be back shortly. I don't want to bear it, you know. I don't want to fucking dick. Every day it is. 
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Parker. This is the Electric Pyramid, and we are back for our, our second hour. Uh, tonight, we're speaking with Wednesday 13, and uh, if this is your first time listening to the show, we want to say thank you for tuning us in. Um, if you've been listening to the show um, in the past, we thank you for your support, and we enjoy doing this. And this is listener-supported radio, so if you dig what we're doing and you can help us out, just go to the freedomslips.com website and maybe pitch a dollar in the bucket or whatever. This is listener-supported radio. We do not have advertisements per se, so uh, we appreciate your support and we appreciate you listening. Tonight is Thursday, August the 14th, and uh, we've been having a really good time so far talking to Wednesday 13. Wednesday just announced a brand new record yesterday, and the bulk of this hour is going to be involving... Uh, talk about that and some of the other things that he started poking around into when he came back um, from Tokyo. And uh, I have to say, uh, when I met Wednesday for the first time, well, actually I'd met him before, but when we spoke the other night, he was he was very well read. I was very impressed and I, and I dug our conversation. We actually talked a lot more about things than we would be able to put into the u- upcoming hour. But um, he mentioned Ancient Aliens is one of the first things that he checked out. And I've got to say, if you haven't checked out the show, you should. It's, it's a fun show. And whether you buy it or not is almost irrelevant because you get to see some really beautiful things that mankind has created over millennia. And if that's not inspiring to you, then I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know what to tell you. It's like my personal take on the whole Ancient Alien thing is, listen, I don't know if it's aliens, but what I do know, and I think Joe – uh, Wednesday might 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 agree, is that there is a portion of human history that we do not have, that we just do not know about. I mean, just yesterday I read that um, some of the mummies that have been found in Egypt are now dated back 2,000 years earlier than what we thought. We found that they were using a certain form of resin uh, to create mummies 2,000 years earlier than what we thought. And then you look at things like Dwarka in India, uh, where you've got these these cities that we're finding out maybe tens of thousands of years old. Same same thing in Quebecli Tepe in Turkey. Anyway, it's very interesting to me, and I think anything that stretches your mind, anything that makes you think is a good thing. And from there, you can take it whichever direction you want. But I want to get back to uh, to Wednesday 13. Wednesday, you said when you came back to the States, so your your mind is... Uh, Scrambled. Is kind of, yeah. Scrambled yeah. And, yeah. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I was, you know, I, again, you know, I, I, I came back. I was just, you know, I was so glad to be back. And I was also, that was at the end of that last Murder Dolls tour. And I just had a lot of stuff going on within the uh, realm of that camp, too, that was just, you know, so I was just, you know, it couldn't have been a better time just like to get home. You know, I was ready sure. for that tour to be over with. Wasn't expecting a, an, an earthquake. Uh, so, either way, I told you, I came home and uh, a friend of mine up the, up the street, um, um, mentioned the ancient aliens and just uh mentioned one episode and i went on netflix and i watched it and i literally i just got obsessed i watched every episode and i couldn't stop watching it because i couldn't believe you know all these things that i never heard about like i said we were saying earlier like i couldn't believe you don't hear about puma punku or you don't right. hear about or, or or the you don't you know that that place Nam- so- any of those things yeah you do it's like we got we got stonehenge some pyramids and a and sphinx, pyramids and they and they just write that off as oh yeah you know with right. some slaves some slaves build it and yeah yeah you know, no <laughs> no 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 you know but again that's what I thought too because that's what you're taught and uh, sure. so again when I started watching Ancient Aliens and then I started investigating different people off the show and then you know how YouTube suggests oh if, if you like this you may like this. And then, and then you can get off, and and, and just, and then the rabbit hole's never ending, that's and true. that's where, and that's pretty much where where it started, and uh, and I, and I would, <laughs> I would say I, I spend so much time just just reading things, and not and not that I'm some kind of crazy person that's, you know, again, you know, when when you get labeled or or again when when I talk about these things, you know, the first thing that you get called is a conspiracy theorist, right? Which is a it's derogative, like, purgatory. You know, and to me, it's just like, no, man, I'm just interested in things that 
we haven't been told about that, right. and, and I want to know why. You know, yeah. it, 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 why? I'm not. You know, I don't have any plans to overthrow the government or <laughs> like a yeah. Deal guns and go live on some ranch somewhere and do and you know do what what is considered you know no i just want to know why this happened why we know things as the way we know it you know so um so for me i just really started questioning reality you know and not the reality that we've been told you know like i really just started going back and going all right this doesn't make sense to me and i started looking at it just the way you would look at a court in a court of law, the way you would, you know, analyze anything. Go, okay, what is this? You know, not, don't believe the story. You know, just pretty much question everything is what I turned into, and 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 it's been nonstop since then. And uh, I know, I know, it's only been a few years of, of me researching this stuff. I'm not an expert in this. I don't know everything at all. <laughs> Again, I just know None things. Of us do. That, I, I I know things that intrigue me and make me ask more questions. And as I told you the other day, Michael, I was like every day. There is something new that I find out about, and and I and I told you things the other day that you never heard about, and I was That's shocked. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like it's just uh, every day. It's like you know, the rabbit hole is just it gets it's never ending, and uh, you know, and it's not an an obsession or anything. It's just it's intriguing, man. It's just like when I was a kid, you know, I got into I, I got into to rock music. It was intriguing to me the 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 story behind the artist, where they came from, and things like that. Just you know, this to me now is like that. It's intriguing to me. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I've been watching horror movies and singing about horror movies and, and, and I still love it and I will continue to do it till, till I'm dead and gone. But, uh, you know, there are new things that, that, that I read about and it, you know, which is perfect for this show, but like, uh, there are things that I've never heard about that are far more terrifying than anything I feel like I've ever could have saw in a Friday the 13th movie or anything at all. It's just, uh, I would agree. The, you know, the, the, thing, the things I know about sometimes that, or things I've read about, I wish I could unknow it sometimes. Exactly. Wednesday, I, I, I think I told you the other night, one of the things that I think is that it doesn't surprise me when artists tell me that, that they come around to these kinds of issues because I think that is historically the place of the artist um, to ask the questions that other people that don't want to ask. And, and here's the deal. You know, an artist really just wants the truth, and and some people they want things to come out the way they want them, but the artist has the freedom to ask the unorthodox questions or look into the unorthodox subjects, and uh, you know I, I praise you for doing it because not everybody does it, not everybody's curious, not everybody even cares or even even occurs to them, and certainly the way society is structured right now, they really don't want you asking a lot of questions, so you get an iPhone, and you get Kardashians, and you get football, and I love football, so don't get me wrong, but, but you know what I'm saying, I mean, there are a lot of things being put out there that are to steer you from being a critical thinker. Exactly, you know, and again, like, the reason, and, and these things that I'm into, you know, these are things that I, you know, the, the stories and things that I've read, and, and, and you know, are things that I would tell my friends, you know, the way I would suggest a movie or go, hey, you know, I know you like this movie, but you know what, you know, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll go, hey, check out this, this video clip I saw on YouTube about this uh, thing called Bohemian Grove. Check that out. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah. like, so, I, you know, these are the kind of little stories and, and conspiracy or what is labeled as um, – uh, stories that I started just investigating and and reading and hearing so many things about, and I <laughs> mean I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's just there's a lot of things that not, not a lot, there are billions of things that I never ever knew, could know, would have ever thought, and I'll guarantee you that half people or, or that listen to this or or, listen, or or my fans listening or or whatever would would never know some of the things we're, that we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. It's just it's insane how it's been hidden, and the question is why it's been hidden from us. Because it's some cool stuff. It really is some cool stuff. Well, you mentioned Bohemian Grove. Uh, just for for the people who don't know, this is just this is something that we can put out there right now, and it just sounds like it's unbelievable. <laughs> no, there is a place. Google there is it, a place. Google it. Put it in Google. Google. Yeah. Bohemian, or, or YouTube. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to believe us. Yeah. Um, what if we told you politicians and very rich men? Um, I'll go up into Northern California and go into the woods and have a crazy party, get super drunk, and dance around a ritual in front of an owl and fake a sacrifice. I mean, it's just nuts. The, the deal is the occult is a very large part of 
the power structures. And they do not want you to know that. They don't want you to know that you believe it. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. They believe it. And those are one of the things that they don't want you to know about it. And the idea of the occult is it makes people uncomfortable. And um, that, that's just one thing you can look into. Like I say, don't believe me. Uh, don't believe Wednesday. Just Google it. Look into it. Well, first off, the word, the word occult. That just sounds scary, especially yeah, it does. where I come from. But the word yep. occult, just you know what it means? It means hidden. That's all it means. That's right. And that's, you know, and quote that from Jordan Maxwell, he, another cool dude that talks about a lot of cool things. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's just um, these, these things are, are hidden from us. And I just asked the questions why. Again, I'm not going to start a, a, a campaign, but I also like to let – my friends and and fans, and I consider my fans my friends because I'm not in Guns N' Roses. I can actually keep in touch with my, you know, in between all the breaks Amen. earlier, I was talking to my, I was actually looking at at Twitter and seeing who was listening to the show tonight. So we have some people listening tonight. So hello to my fans Thank out you. there. And we someone says, it. someone says, Wednesday says, I know a lot. And I want to say to them, I know. I know, I say, I know a lot. It's know. better than not knowing. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, man. There's there's a lot of things, you know. And I told you, Mike, the other day, like you know, when I started going back, and I when I when I read a lot of things, and I felt like I got enough, you know, knowledge on the ancient aliens and that backstory, and then that started setting off a trigger of I started going back and thinking about as a kid, and I started going, all right, you know, and I started kind of piecing stories together with entertainment and like shows I watched, like like GI Joe. Or or that or that TV show V or the miniseries mm-hmm. V that was on on yeah. on NBC, which is basically a modern day Anunnaki story, right? You know, I mean, it even starts off the miniseries starts off, and it's like for the resistance fighters. This is for you. This is a, you know, this is a, uh, you know, it's a whole other story, and uh, you know, but but it's, but it's the same. It's the same thing, and. Uh, but as a kid, I just thought, oh, this is great. You know, it's another Star Wars type story. Some lizard people. Yeah, and uh, you know, so as the more stuff I started reading about, I started investigating. You know, um, you know the the origin of of uh, you know like of, of where this reptilian thing comes from, and like uh, it, it goes way back. It's not it's not just from that V show like I thought when you know what I mean. Right. It goes way back, man. It's like the 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 serpent worship and uh, the uh, you know just the reptilian thing. It's it's pretty much it pretty much dominates everything it is a very powerful symbol in um in our it's a very powerful archetype and you have to wonder why that is i mean every every time you look at a pharmacy look at that look at that symbol the caduceus you know there's a you know yeah. it's a it's, it's it's right there so there's like you know again so like when i started getting into all this kind of stuff i started getting into the symbolism and reading like whoa why why do we know that like when you look at a dollar bill like you know, we're conditioned to just accept that as like, okay, it's a dollar bill. That's what our money looks like. But like, you know, really look at it. <laughs> that's it's bizarre. What does that have to do with anything that's you know American? Like for me, a dollar bill should have John Wayne on it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, because that's what is you know John and Wayne a baseball and yeah, or baseball, a football, yeah, uh, everything. Uh, Coca Cola, you know, buy a buy a sponsor on that thing, you know. But like, it's some weird stuff, you know. There's that all C and I. It's thirteen blocks on that pyramid. Yeah, you know, there's there's thirteen stars that's in a hexagram over that eagle. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some weird stuff there, and I know people. On you know, again, it just gets labeled in that conspiracy theory. Oh, you're just you're just overthinking it. It's like no, 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 I'm no. Not, this th- I'm, listen, I'm viewing it. Overthinking it is who who made that Wednesday. I've had I, we've had a thirty second degree Mason on here just a few weeks ago, and and um, you know we listen. It is it's not a conspiracy theory. The United States was basically created um, by Freemasons, and a lot a lot of their ideas were what went into the making of Washington D.C. The symbols that we use, and even our three branches of government. And I've got to say, I used to be kind of scared of the Masons. I didn't fully understand them, and I've actually come away from the whole thing with with a lot of respect for for their uh, carrying of this knowledge for hundreds and hundreds of years. Oh yeah, it's a uh, it's a real deal. It's not just a uh, bunch of dudes making making some nice brickwork. Right, right. <laughs> right. No, it's 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 so way beyond deep, and like again, it's it's hard to explain. We can't. I mean, even though we're we're talking for three hours tonight. 
Yeah. You know, just trust me. Again, I'm not I'm not a knowledge in this or, 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 or I'm not a professional in this. I can only tell you what I've read. And it just goes on and on. You can Google everything we're talking about tonight. Just type right. in any of these things. See it for yourself. Make your make your mind up for yourself. But for me, there's a lot of weird stuff, like a lot of weird stuff. And I just, you know, and the question is like, why? Why have we not been told about it? You know, and that's uh, that's the the cool, crazy, weird part about it. And here's something a lot of people don't know, and you and I discussed this. It's like, okay, you take Iraq, a modern day Iraq is uh, the fertile crescent. Um, it is the birthplace of civilization. It is part of Iraq was the Garden of Eden from the Bible. And it's always uh, intrigued me that, you know, isn't it weird how we keep just blowing the place up? Um, you look at the Sumerians who were the ancient people that lived in that area and their stories uh Listen, it looks like they are not the first civilization because everything keeps getting pushed backwards um, farther. But certainly they were one of the first civilizations to have agriculture, to have um, taxation, to have a monetary system and have astronomy. And that was in that was in that was in ancient Iraq. That's the place that we're you know, that we've laid waste to. um, And they constantly have all of this uh trouble in and i don't think that's a coincidence no no and not it's like but what i would say we as a uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna even gonna give a percentage but i can just say from people or that i know or where i come from or whatever when you say iraq or anything like that it's like hey they're the enemy right they're the enemy but i don't ever remember in school again, I didn't pay a you know, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't that great in school. I went, I went, but I don't ever remember them telling us or just you know beating into our brains that hey, this is the cradle of civilization, right? But it is, it is, it the is Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, Mesopotamia. It, that was where it was. Absolutely, that is you know ancient Babylon. Uh, every it's all it's it's there. That is that is where it all started. But we're not told that. No. You know, and, and you ask anybody, you know, if you did one of those Jay Leno on the streets, like, hey, what do you know about Iraq? Well, uh, Saddam what Hussein. Anybody, what do anybody go, oh, that's the uh, cradle of civilization. And, uh, you know, it's like, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. I didn't know that. Right. I'm not saying people are dumb for not knowing that. No, I'm just no. saying that people are not, you know, it's like they, they watch the news. They expect the best. You know, America is known for this being this amazing place, and it is an amazing place. I love it here. You know, Absolutely. I'm not I'm not I'm not here to talk bad about it. Not you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm here to talk about you know the weird things that don't make sense to me. You yeah. know, and uh, but again, it's just it's man, it's just uh, there's so many crazy things. We can just keep going. I don't know <laughs> where we're going with this topic, but well. Yeah. Well, basically, you were saying that you know this was kind of setting up the ideas for your new album. So tell us about the new album because I know your fans want to know about it and what yeah. this kind of has to do with what you're conjuring. Well, you know, man. I mean, uh, and again, uh, we 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 launched our uh, we we call it our new album campaign. Um, we launched it yesterday on Wednesday the thirteenth, the only Wednesday the thirteenth of this year. Uh, oh. Normally, nor- normally I, I play a show or I, uh, you know, every Wednesday the thirteenth is like a special thing. I try to do something sure. different. And uh, so this year I took I took time off from touring because I've been pretty much going nonstop for like twelve, thirteen years. It feels like. And uh, so either way. Um, uh, we announced yesterday where uh, we set up uh, a, a pre-orders um, for our for our new record is com- will be out in January, and uh, and I'm a, I've announced it as it's a concept record, so it's it's basically it's all around a theme. And uh, again, since I've been you know what I've talked about the night, I've been all these things that have been in my head since since Japan, you know, or things that you know I think about a lot. You know, this is part sure. of my you know day when I wake up. I like to read news and and read or read alternate news or real news. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, um, you know, so I don't know how it turned into it, but I was like, you know, I started writing a story. So, again, we haven't recorded the record yet. We, we leave in two weeks uh, to start recording the record. I have 17 songs written Excellent. for it, but we have 
you know, we have like a week with the band that's working on stuff as well. So we have a lot of material to choose from. But uh, but it was really cool that I, um, you know, the, the music was really was really different in the first place. And I was like, okay, well, all right, why is the music different? I just, you know, again, I don't try to write a style. I just write what comes out. Sure. And, you know, and I feel like my music style's changed over the years. Not, you know, some of my fans would probably say for better or worse. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just write what what I feel is natural or what's a natural progression for me. And uh, but again, I've been putting out music. You know, I, I just turned thirty eight yesterday. Happy and, birthday! Um, you know, I've been thank you. Um, I've I've been putting out music. You know, I I did like my, my first like what was called like my, my first EP or whatever in like nineteen ninety four. Um, you know, and ever since 1996, I put a full solid release out, whether it was on a label or independent release, but it was a, you know, a, a, a full record. I did that constantly, you know, you were quite since, prolific, you know, I have a lot of stuff. I have a country band. I have and Michael, you said you saw gunfire 76, yep. you know? Um, so when it's time to do Wednesday, 13 solo record album, number six, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? Like where, where for me in my head, you know, of course I could, I could write my, another record and uh, like, like my first album and call it Transylvania part two. Mm-hmm. I could do, you know, I could, but I don't have any interest in repeating what I've done because that's what makes records cool. That's what makes me like the right artists I like because every artist that I look up to, they've, they've grew, but they kept that, that same composure there with the, with what they're all about, you know what I mean. The music can change, yes. but you still have the element there. It was an evolution. I, yeah, so I I thought long and hard about it, and I was like, all right, how can I make a Wednesday Thirteen record, but also imply things that I've been interested in, and then make a what if story, and that mm-hmm. became the concept thing. There was an old comic I believe Marvel called uh, has called called What If, like, a, okay. and it was like, what if Captain America. And Spider Man had a baby. I'm, that's, a, that's not an actual comic, but I'm just giving you know like because it's right, called. Right, right. Yeah, and I'm and again I I'm not a comic book nerd, but I remember this series called What If, mm-hmm. and that's what kind of created this story. And I went, okay, what if the human race woke up one day, and our powers that be, our elite, said, "Hey, everything you know is a lie." Wow. Everything that you've been taught since no matter how old you are or whatever, everything you know is a lie. Mm-hmm. And you got about 24 hours and we're unleashing this plague on you. <laughs> Done. And, that, and that's my story. And wow. then it kind of goes into a, you know, so I can sort of make a m- movie story about it. But I can also imply all these things that we've been talking about tonight or we will yes. talk about. You know, in that aspect, you know, like for example, like uh, you know, the 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 Walking Dead uh, is a huge show right now, which or not now, but it's been around for years. You know, yep. I've been watching it forever. Um, but you know, with with that type of epidemic, it's Walking Dead. You know, all right, so there's dead people. You're not infected. You know the deal. But these people still kind of have their faith, or at least they try to hold on to what it is. But what if you were told, hey, no, there is no faith. You just yes. nothing to hold on to. What would that? What would that change, Rick Grimes? To <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Like, what would that change that thing if they just whatever that last little bit of what they thought they had they were holding on to? What if it wasn't there? It's so, all gone. Yeah. So, uh, so, th- so this story, and again, I'm still putting it together with the music and everything, but it kind of goes from a story like that where you kind of wake up and you're told everything you know is a lie. This plague's unleashed. The, the record's called Monsters of the Universe come out and plague and it's about basically in short it's about these these different alien races been working with the governments and the elite for all these years and they just decide hey it's time to cleanse the planet but instead of doing like the great flood and just wash it over they find out you know and this is what my story is about is about they uh they pretty much unleash this plague on the people and these people die they turn into zombies but their zombies are basically like incubation stations for these aliens and uh, so instead of like just killing them off, they're just kind of using their bodies as a new way to. So they're just repopulating the the earth with aliens. And uh, so I have this whole thing about crop circles and like there's all these crop circles that end up all over the world. So these zombies, when the plague breaks out, they all die. Uh, or the people die, but they come, they they awake as zombies, and they have like a couple of you know days or whatever where the, the aliens kind of incubate in their body. Then they're drawn toward these crop that these crop circles. And then they kind of hatch, and then they're aliens. So it's just a, 
it's a weird story, but uh, it, it, and it has no happy ending. It, it really is. It ends with, you know, it's, it ends with just, uh, you know, this is it. I'm done. You know, wow. and, uh, so uh, it's just, I've combined it. I made it a horror weird. I don't know. I don't have to explain it, but that's just, uh, it sounds pretty epic. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> and uh, will this be a double album? Or? Well, actually, um, yes, I, I, I would say it's, <laughs> I would, I mean, cause I still, th- I always still think in wax terms cause I'm old, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know, well, yeah. On, as far as vinyl, uh, we, we announced yesterday with that release, uh, with the pre-order thing that, uh, it's going to be on double vinyl because the record's going to be a long record and on vinyl, yeah. you can't make it sound good by putting squeeze and all that stuff. So it, it's going to sure. be, it's going to be broken apart. It's like at a theater part. It's broken in three parts. 20 minutes on each side of the vinyl and the fourth side of the vinyl is like a picture disc thing that we're going to have. So it's a really cool special package we have with the vinyl and, uh, but yeah, but the records, it, it's long, it tells a story. And my goal is to really paint up this picture. Like when I want people to, you know, the way I listen to music, I put my headphones on and I close my eyes and I try to get lost in the music and some, some music or bands I listen to, it's just, it, you know, it's rock, it's whatever. I don't have to close my eyes and get into it, but like some records you just get lost in and yeah. I want to paint a picture and this record, I, that's what I want to, that's what I want to do with it. I want to make this my, uh, my, my soundscape, my, uh, thing. You can just close your eyes and, and hear this story. And it's, uh, it's not a happy story. It's not a, it's not a true story. It's a, it's a what if story. It's ambitious though. I like that. I like when yeah. bands, I like when artists stretch out and go for something big because too often it's easy to, um, and listen, I love ACDC, one of my very favorite bands, but I mean, they make a record that sounds very same over and over, but I like when a band stretches out and, uh, has a big concept and it almost seems anachronistic at times when you hear the term, uh, concept album, but personally I like it. And my favorite bands were always album bands. Well, yeah, man, and, and, and the thing is, you know, I've never been like a concept fan, so to speak. I mean, of course, Welcome to My Nightmare is one of my favorite records. and Great record. But, but, but again, when I listened to that record, I didn't, I didn't have to know the story. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I, it's just there, there were good songs. So that is something that I've really kept in mind, that you don't have to know the story of this to sure. understand my new record. But you have to understand that the music – is going to relate to the story. So we, that's, what's fun about this is that, it, that it is a concept record that we can step out musically. And I want to try some different sounds and just, uh, you know, my, I've, I've had this, this same lineup as my band for a few years now, and just, we've gotten really close and we're, we're a good tight band. It's not me just, you know, going, okay guys, we have a tour of fly in. We rehearse for a couple of days. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we actually have, you know, goals and we actually hang out as friends and, you know, so it's really cool to um, be able to go there and, and work on this record, and, and we all have a lot of collective thoughts on these same subjects. You know, some of the guys in the band as well. So uh, it'll be fun to go th- uh, to go to Texas at the end of the month and and bring this thing to life. So uh, I'm I'm super excited about it. You know, every time you do a record, and as often as I put records out, just to do something different and just um, step out of it. But again, I, I feel like this is going to be my coolest, most different, uh, unique record uh that i've ever tried to do so uh you know i can't I'm, wait to hear it yeah it's let cool, me man. let me ask you about your workflow um would you because you're the primary writer um so do you uh put down demos of your work and then show it to the band or you just play them the song and then you guys come up with your arrangements how do you generally work with the band um you know it, it's been different for over the years like i told you this is like my first lineup that i've had like it's been solid since like like uh since 2011 mm-hmm. um but uh you know like normally i i do demos here at my house i'm still an idiot i told you i couldn't even get skype to work so i can't even work pro tools or anything so i'm doing like eight track demos with like drum machines and i'm like doing it by That's hand fine. Like, doing the yeah. hand like doing hand drum beats like doing a sure. snare kick snare kick yeah. and <laughs> You know, so I'm doing demos like that, but it's still, it's an idea, and the guys know me so well, and they know my demos I've done for years, like, they get the general idea. It's just kind of putting that idea, like, down, and it's it's never, like, set in stone, but it just kind of gives you something to work off of. I you know, it. it's not it's not rocket science to, to write, write music, but the cool thing that I want to do with this record is that I want to take it, because over the years, I kind of have done demos and handed it, you know, to the band, and we kind of just imitate what's on the demo, this time it's going to be way beyond that. Like we're really going to experiment with with drums and guitars, and like it's going to be riff heavy, and it's just going to be a different 
record altogether. It's like a you know like an epic Wednesday Thirteen shock opera, if you will. I don't Fantastic. know if that even makes sense. I totally makes sense. Well, with a piece this big, and I guess it's coming out in January 2015, right? Yes, yes. And that's the reason why we, we launched the the pre order um, yesterday is because we have to have the record recorded. Artwork turned in by October 17th to meet a January 17th release. So it, w- it really wasn't like we were just and, – and this year I put out so many different things. I didn't want my fans to think like, hey, guys, there's something else. Just, uh, you know, here we are doing a new record. Like we had to get this done because to be on tour at the 1st of January and touring that year, it's really important for me to get out and tour because I haven't toured this year. So mm-hmm. I want to go out. I want to start next year off with a brand-new record and just touring – just nonstop in all my all my places and seeing all my fans and just uh, yeah, so that's the whole reason. So would twenty fifteen be primarily touring the whole year? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, you know, we have our main spots that we tour. I mean, uh, uh, um, Australia and uh, and uh, the UK is like has been my my biggest places. But of course, like all, all over Europe, you know, like Germany and and Finland and just Sweden, just all, all over the place. I mean, I I've been fortunate enough to tour all those places. So. Uh, so again, we plan on bringing the tour everywhere. And again, it's like I never I always ask, I always tell my fans, I go, you know, they go, why don't why don't you play here? And I go, well, it's because someone didn't want to book us, you know. It's right, like, it's, right. It's, it's not like we're asking the fortune to do anything, you know. It's like we don't make a lot of money. We make enough money to get by and and uh, and pay for our flights and just you know, like you'd want to go work a job, you know, you wouldn't want to go work a job for free, you know, no. and. Uh, you know, so it's like uh, we have to make things work, and it's like today. Like I, I announced uh, five acoustic dates we're doing on the West Coast, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to break away from the conversation, but uh, no, no, but, no, yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, some fans were asking, like, "Oh my God, you know, why aren't you touring here? Why aren't you touring here?" And the honest truth is, is because we we put feelers out to people going, "Hey, do you want a Wednesday 13 acoustic show?" And most people would look at you and go, "What?" <laughs> Wednesday 13 acoustic, that guy that looks like that and screams. I would love to see that. You're you know, doing it again, here in not, LA in November, right? Exactly. So I'm going to be here. Is, and what I'm saying is we, we put the feelers out and we had a lot of people contact us back and a lot of people that didn't. And the, a lot of people that didn't con, uh, contact us back made it not able for us to do a whole tour. Understood. So we had to make it work for us, you know, and being that I live on the West coast and it's a acoustic tour. I don't have to bring the whole band now. I just, we made, it made sense to play the whiskey and play Seattle because there's some, some of my, some of my bigger places. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what happened with that as far as, uh, playing shows. But in January, the new record's out and we start touring as the full band and it's, uh, full on. Well, to kind of get your fans kind of uh, in the headspace for some of this, I wanted you to make some recommendations of things that you've really been turned on to, people that you're reading um, over the last couple of years that you'd like to share if if you wanted to, um, some things that you would just like to throw out. Hey, if people are interested in these subjects, here's some of my recommendations. You know, uh, I, again, I mean, I, I started off, I told you, with, with Ancient Aliens, and I just, yep. uh, you know, I saw a lot of the cool people on there, like Giorgio. I actually met Giorgio twice. At, um, Giorgio's at a, a great guy. I, Awesome dude, so cool, and uh, he rec- he re- he recognized me the second time, and I was just like, uh, he's like, and he's like, totally hey. sincere too. He's a great guy, you know. I yeah. I, I told you I uh, I had just met Eddie Monster. That's right. Five minutes, yeah. five minutes before I met Giorgio, and I had no idea that Giorgio was going to be at at the Monster Palooza. It wasn't advertised as far as I as far as I saw, mm-hmm. and I was just like, uh, you know, I just met Eddie Monster, and I didn't expect to see him either. You know, so I just went to this Monster Palooza thing in in, uh, in L.A. and I was like, "Man, there's Eddie Monster!" So I went and got an autograph, and I'm just like walking around like a little kid, just going, just staring at the picture, going, "Wow, wow, we wow, man! I just met Eddie Monster!" You know, like a little kid just in space. And I turned the corner, and there's Giorgio, and I was just kind of like, "Who's Eddie Monster?" Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's how much I was into the things I was reading. Sure. And I ran up to him, and I got a picture, and I'm sure people saw online the, the photo I posted. I posted it a million times, and then I met him, you know, after that. Um, but again, you know, I, I've I've read a lot of different books, you know, everything from you know, uh, you know, from from the ancient alien guys. You have, you have Giorgio, and of course his yep. mentor. You have Eric, Eric von Daniken. Yes. You got Sitchin. You got yep. you know everything. You know, I even had a, a, a Richard Hoagland's uh, Dark sure. Mission book. Yep. Um, but the the out of all the things that I that I've read over this this short time, the one book that I told you, Michael, I'm in the middle of reading the g- most gigantic book of all time to me um, is the new David Icke book, Perception Deception. Yeah. 
And I looked, uh, I looked that up on on Amazon. I'm going to be buying that. You know, and uh, and again, you know, I had heard the David Icke name. I'd actually saw him on Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Theory, and yeah, he's pretty much. And and, and I love Ventura. He's awesome. I'm a huge fan. Me too. Of him from from wrestling as a kid, and you know, all, you know, Predator, just everything. He's a cool dude. He's just you know, and uh, I don't know whatever happened. What he had this interview with David Icke online and or on the show, and it was just like a thing, you know. And and and, I, and when I saw that, I was like, oh well, Ventura doesn't like that guy. He's got to be stupid. And I and I couldn't have been more wrong, um, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and I and I got this perception deception book, and I'm telling you, man, it's just uh, I, what I told you, Michael, is like it's it really is every question that I ever asked, yeah. and every question that I never knew to ask is in right. this book, and I'm halfway through it, and I'll, you know, I'll be honest, I I don't know how I don't know how Ike does it because every book that he writes is just a thick slab of 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 footnotes i mean the it's man information it's like it's i don't it's, know how he does it it's well because he cares yeah i guess you're or right. at least it seems like he cares you yes. know i mean you know he uh you know he's uh just just the things in this book you know and 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 the way he presents it it's not like hey this is how it is it's like it's almost what he says this is the information i have and you can choose to do with it however you want Take right. it however you want, you know. Yeah. But but the information that he provides, ninety nine point nine percent of it is things that I'll guarantee you that none of our friends, family have ever, ever heard about. Right. Ever, you know, and that blows my mind because if my family and friends and everyone else that you knew or you know yeah. had heard about these things, things would be a lot different than it than it is right now. It, it would be it would be pretty shocking, and a lot of a lot of what we are led to do and put money towards are you know is kind of conventional wisdom, and conventional wisdom isn't always wise, um, and it's not always the truth, and and that's not to knock you know anything. It's just there are reasons that we are not told the whole story about certain things, and whenever I hear about some scandal on television, almost without fail. Um, the first story that they put out, which is the story that everybody remembers, is the one that turns out to be untrue. And then the second, third, fourth revision, gradually they got a, they get around to what's kind of the truth. But they know that it doesn't matter because really people are only going to remember what they said first. And you, and you watch. And uh, I, I, I challenge the audience. It's like the next time something happens that's just horrible, um, whether it's to an individual or to a group of people, watch how the story unfolds. Same with you know with these these uh, Malaysian airlines. In both cases, the the day the day by day the story was changing. The story was evolving. And at first, you know, it, it's one thing they're just certain this happened. Then the next day it changes again. Then the next day cha- changes again. And after a while, people just don't. They're confused and have to look away. Yeah, I, I I told you the other day we started to again we talked about a million different things and like yeah. uh, you know the thing that I just like you said you know just just if you step back from the picture and not just be involved and watch it unfold but kind of step back as like an investigator and kind of watch watch things like uh you know uh, for example like you know we we talked about Sandy Hook or what I mentioned about Sandy Hook that yeah. was the last you know major tragedy here in the in the U S. Um, that I saw that was that was allowed to have have uh, surveillance from the sky, um, because after that the next thing was that Chris Dorner, the L.A. cop, that's right, yeah, who let it off. And I remember watching that whole thing on CNN. Me and you know I remember just watching the whole thing unfold, and they pulled all the all the helicopters back. They weren't allowed to circle over that place, and then once it got so far away, then it was like, oh, there's a smoke cloud. Oh right. yeah, a guy set the place on fire. Like it was almost like, you know, because all the all the crazy stuff about Sandy Hook that came under fire, yeah. Yeah. how you know so many loopholes in that thing. It almost seems like you know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just kind of what I what I've observed is like I don't see any of those, uh, you know those helicopter aerial views anymore. It's like, that's not allowed. Well, I, I just put it out to people. It's like, you know, just, just be careful what you believe. And, 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 and the, listen, I, I, I work in the media and the media is a business and it is big, big, big business. And the news that you get, guess what? It, it comes through filters. It comes through the filters of their corporate uh, sponsors. It comes through the filter of their corporate bias 
Um, it is, uh, you know, th- there's a lot of different things that go into making the news, and don't 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 buy it full full on is what it is. And just think critically. And I'm not telling anybody to believe anything, but I will say this: this might sound a little hippy dippy ish, but I mean, a lot of times, just listen to your gut, man. Listen to your heart. And if it seems like it's BS, it may very well be. And you know, look, listen. I will. I'll listen to MSNBC, then I'll listen to Fox. I'll listen to right and left wing people because somewhere in the midst of all that, there may be a sliver of truth. And, you know, when people only listen to the side that they already agree with, it's just an echo chamber and you're only getting a portion of the true story and you're getting, you're like, you're kind of getting programmed basically, which is actually the intent of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> and, uh, you're being programmed. Yeah, and, and to understand the news that they want you to understand, and just like you know, it's like in school, you're being taught what they want you to be taught. Right. You know, like because if it wasn't if it wasn't that way, then we would know about all these things we talked about. Like I said, it's on ancient aliens and history. Yeah. History would have been so cool. I mean, it was already cool. Yeah, that's the only subject I, I did like. You know, um, but. You know, it was to still. It's like, but if we would have talked about all these cool things that you know we've been talking about tonight, it's like it's, it's history. Yeah. History's amazing. I mean, you're right because it's like, and it's presented in such a way that when you're a kid, I don't know. I think most kids are kind of like, yeah, history, whatever. But um, there are so many incredible things, inspiring things. And listen, every day, all you got to do is turn on the news for five minutes, and your head is just filled with despair and <laughs> bad news, and you know. Negativity, and yet we as a civilization, we as people, however we did it, and it's a mystery, we are capable of great things. We we make great art. We make great love. I mean, we we we, we create. You know, we split atoms. We have all of this potential. And when you look at the ancient monoliths that we created, or we created with the assistance of somebody else, I don't even know. It, it's inspiring. And so, um, to me, when I watch a show like Ancient Aliens, I. It actually, I just really enjoy it because it gives me something to take my mind off of the everyday despair that I see on the news or or in in other forms of media. Yeah, definitely, man. It's a it's it's a, it's a great show. And again, I don't think every I, I think some no, of the shows no. they're definitely stretching to make a absolutely. <laughs> again, and, you know, again, I understand that it's how it is. But uh, but a lot of things. Again, I, I would say. Ninety percent of that show, the topics or things they've had over the years that it's been on 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 the air, that it's it's things that I've never heard about. I've never heard of the yeah. Nazca lines. You know, yeah. if I would have saw that as a kid, I would probably have drew that on my wall. Sure, some of those things. You know what I mean? Like it was just weird stuff. You know, like a, and actually, uh, just this week they found some more Nazca lines because there was a windstorm. Um, a guy flew over it, and they found two more uh, figures. I was I almost was going to talk about it earlier in the show, and I didn't bring my notes, but they found two more figures in the Nazca lines just in the last, like, I guess this week or two. That's crazy. I you know. know? And, and, and again, I don't, I don't know if any of my fans are listening and would even know what the Nazca lines are. Again, any of the stuff I'm talking about, just Google it. It's not, I'm not a scholar in it i'm just kind of repeating what i've what i've read but it's just so interesting it just blows my mind that you know it's like my story for this new record it's like what if you know and i and every day i go what if everything we've been taught is wrong yep well you mentioned you mentioned they live you mentioned v i mean your album has these components of great science fiction, which is the what if. What if there is a insidious race? So I think it's going to be a great record. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. People don't have to uh, necessarily uh, take it on the level that we're talking about it, but it just sounds like a great rock and roll record to me. No, not at all. And again, if you don't get the story, and I'm not going to like, again, it's not like a, I'm not doing this as your typical concept record because I've never been a, a fan of like, like I've, of many concept records, it's like it's it's not like there's a character. There's not like a Bob in the story, you know. There's no Tommy, it's, you know. No, there is the 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 listener is the per, the victim. You're listening to this as if you're on the planet Earth and this stuff is happening, you know. So that's kind of what the this. But again, it's it's everything links together and it just you know it it shows the beginning to the end and uh, you know it's it'll be fun to it'll be fun to bring it to life. 
Fantastic. Now, you guys go to Texas to record this. Uh, wh- why is that? I mean, I'm from Texas. I'm stoked that you're going there. Do you? No. Well, first of all, I, I love Texas. I've been able to tour there for years. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, three of our band guys uh, live in Texas and San Antonio. So uh, oh, right on. Uh, uh, me and our guitar player, Jack, we live here in California. So we're going to go there. Um, it's just easy to record. You know, we don't have to go to studios these days. Not, not like we're doing this this whole pot or this this thing on on uh, on, on a, in a studio. You know, you can do yeah. things from home now, and you can make amazing, great recordings. So we're going to go where it's comfortable, and I have to put everybody in hotels. We're going to stay at our friend's house and uh, record, and and uh, you know, and again, there's a lot of cool UFO activity happening there. So after the uh, at night, we'll be definitely hanging out and looking up in the sky. Well, let me ask you this: since you bring it up, because I wanted to ask you, like, what are some of your favorite UFO cases that you've come across? You know, I think the most interesting one, which links back to, uh, which we didn't even get into with uh, after the earthquake, um, is the 97 uh, Phoenix lights. Big time. Yep. I mean, you know, that's the most, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not an expert, but I, <laughs> what I, what I hear, that's one of the most viewed UFOs in American history by, well, by, 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 by so many people. And it's the, one of the biggest UFOs ever viewed by a mass amount of people the governor of arizona at that time five symington at the time he yeah (laughs) i mean and i'm just telling for the people who don't know he came out and had a press conference and said uh, you know he had one of his underlings dress up in a alien suit and they laughed the whole thing off and then after he was out of office he later admitted no i saw it it was totally real oh yeah yeah he looks like a little scared kid with you know like like a bully grabbing by his neck going give me your lunch money punk and he's like all right, well, you know, uh, yeah. I was wrong about that, and it's like, okay, well, but yeah, those, uh, you know, those the, the 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 Phoenix lights. You can type that in on Google. Anybody's listening, yeah. the Phoenix lights. I mean, it was viewed by just thousands, thousands, thousands. of people, and it's and it's enormous. It's yes. a, 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 it was completely silent, and uh, it looked like a, a giant triangle, but yep. it had to be like the size of like what they said, like five or six aircraft carriers. Like it At was least. like. A, you know, yeah, but you know, but there was no sound, right? You know, and some of my things I've come across reading, I can't pinpoint exactly where I heard it, um, but um, I've heard that harp, you know, H A A R P or is it H A R P? Which you know, I've also heard things that links up with harp and the the Tokyo the, or the Japanese uh, earthquake. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I forgot where I was going with this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> well, you're talking about um, uh, not making noise, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, so uh, I I had read a lot of things recently about harp having the uh, ability not only to manipulate the weather, but they can also manipulate images of that size. Right. That, that could, in turn, you know. So for example, you know, you put an image of God in the sky, and sure. someone goes, "Oh, I see. You know, I seen the Virgin Mary in the clouds," and then you right. know, this whole part of the world worships that yeah you know it's like they have the capability to manipulate weather and images in the sky so you could say an alien invasion is going on you're just basically watching a projection hologram yeah you could fake the whole thing you know so it's like uh you know and it's insane to go oh you're just making that up no that's a it's a real thing they have the technology to do that they do have the technology to do that you know and, and and not knowing these things before, you know, and knowing them now, that it makes you question things you, you looked at in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm skeptical of everything these days. Like, the more I've looked into this, and I, and I tell myself, it's like the more I know, the more I don't know. And um, <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. like, when I, see, when I see things on television, I'm just like, I'm skeptical. And it's like, I just naturally want to go, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, it, I just put it out there for people to. But, but it's not, but, but what is wrong with, with doing that? And, and That's but right. Again, You'll get labeled as being a conspiracy. Oh, you're just always sure. doing the wrong thing. It's like, no, I'm just not believing what is being reported to me by people that have a complete record of yes. telling the wrong thing. Right. So if I'm wrong for questioning things, then then I'm wrong. <laughs> right. And the deal is, I think a lot of people are coming around to the same place that we're at now. And it's like, I mean, why don't you? I mean, uh, I mean, it goes, your dad's a Vietnam vet. Look how that yeah. war started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so exactly. Yeah, well, we can talk about that too, and that yeah, that's in the nine eleven and the whole thing. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I, I told you the other day. It's like uh, my 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 father 
um, you know, and I, I told this story on my acoustic tour earlier this year because I get to actually do a long set and I tell stories and things. And I told this one story about my my dad. It kind of linked up to a song, and uh, you know, I told about about my father being drafted into Vietnam when he was 19 years old. He went into his first tour, or whatever that's called, and he came back and he decided to go back in. And uh, he was in Vietnam for a, you know a total of nine years. Mm-hmm. And he became a sergeant, got the Bronze Star. You know, um, he has photo albums. I I love to stare at when I'm a, when I'm back home visiting. You know, just watching my just looking pictures of my dad hanging out at the barracks and just you know, you know. And uh, but my dad was never like bragging about. It. He wasn't even though I love Rambo and GI Joe as a kid. My dad wasn't like standing in front of me going, "Yeah, I did that." You know, like he was yeah. he was more like the Steve Martin going, "Oh, yeah, I was the comedy relief for that." You know, yeah, and. uh so uh, he didn't you know, romanticize it. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, so that just kind of, uh, you know, so I, I had that that military kind of upbringing as well, you know, to respect military and things like that, you know, and uh, but uh, but again, you know, my my dad drafted, you know, nineteen years old, and then in two thousand five, it's revealed to the world for the first time that the whole reason that we went in as America into Vietnam was was done on a false flag. Yes. And if people know what a false flag is, that's basically, you know. Uh, but basically, uh, when we invaded Vietnam, um, it was basically put in the news of the media here, the CNN of that time, would be, uh, you know, it said that um, the Gulf of Tonkin, that we had a ship, American ship, and there were how many American soldiers floating in, in the Gulf of Tonkin that the Vietnam, Vietnamese attacked. And so we had to in, invade Vietnam. And here's and another mind blower. The rear admiral of that craft, that ship, was Jim Morrison's father. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah. It's crazy. So then, you know, so so you know, Vietnam goes on all those years, fifty or sixty five thousand people dead yes. total, whatever. Yes. And then in two thousand five it comes out that that whole Gulf of Tonkin incident that was reported in the news never happened. There was no ship that was attacked, there's no dead soldiers. It was done to instigate an attack, and right. you know, and it makes criminal. And it makes me think, like, who's not pissed off about that? You know, right. you know. I, I asked my dad about it, and I and I remember asking. He didn't really say much. You know, I just said, "What do you think?" I said, "You know about that?" And he goes, "Yeah." What do you think about it? And he just kind of went like, <laughs> almost like, well, "What the hell do you think I'm going to do?" Right. <laughs> you know, my my dad's awesome again, but it's just. One of those things and like, you know, so when you put that in perspective, you know, that was done in, you know, when Vietnam started, you know, so it's like you put that in perspective and you start just questioning every little teeny tiny thing and you question like, you know, why after, you know, World War II, why did, why did we bring, you know, those Nazi, well, I know, I know why, but right. why is it okay that we brought those Nazi guys that we didn't kill, like, I always say his name, horrible, Warner Von Braun yeah. or, yeah. Uh, they brought him over, and he's the guy that designed the rocket that got us to the moon. That's right, Operation he, Paperclip. We brought those guys over here to work for us. Yeah, and then then he becomes Walt Disney's buddy, and he's making Walt Disney films about yeah. space and making space, you know, uh, <laughs> stations. Yeah. Like, you know, there's just things that we don't really question because we get so consumed with our own lives and paying bills and and things like that. We don't have time to sit around and think about this. So the and people I would that argue do, that that's intentional. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And the people that do sit around and think about it, that bring it up, people will say me or you or whatever, you know, they yeah. go, oh, well, you're just conspiracy theorists. They go, no, right. I'm just pointing out <laughs> what what is obvious to me. I got enough time to think about it, you know? And uh, so well, Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 just, I just know we're coming up on the uh, on the end here. Wincy, man, this has been a blast talking to you, brother. Um <laughs> And we need to do this again. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Wednesday 13. This show is the Electric Pyramid. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Please go purchase, uh, do the pre-order on Wednesday's record. Wednesday, give us the uh, the URL for that again. Yeah, uh, uh, we have the pre-order right now on our uh, on our merch store. It's called MorganMerch.com, and uh, we still have the. You can still get the CD for eight ninety nine. That's cheap, eight ninety nine. If you guys help us, yeah, if you guys help us pre-order that. 
that helps us get our, our new record done the way we want it. We get to spend time with it. We get to bring the story to life, which I told you guys about tonight. And um, so, yeah, it's on MorganTheMerch.com. We have, uh, you know, you get it on vinyl, you get it on CD. And, uh, yeah, check it out. And I'm also on Facebook. I think it's Wednesday third. I don't know what it is on Facebook. I don't know my sites. I'm terrible I with that. I know what you mean. Yeah, you can well, find me. Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us tonight. We're going to take it out with another record, there, another song that I picked out today. I believe it's called Nowhere um, off of uh, Wednesday's most recent album. We thank you for being with us tonight. Um, if this was your first time, I appreciate you sharing your evening with us. My name is Michael Parker. This is the Electric Pyramid. God bless. Good night. Peace out, yo. All systems down and all that's left is the sound. Left in doubt, reaching for stars. You know you can't get far if you don't know who you are. If you can leave a scar, it bites all hands that beat and be because that hand is so deceiving. Is there a law against me? In your suit and tie, try and dictate my life with all of your lies. No respect, no loyalty, nobody rides for free, especially with me. And now I bite the hand that's feeding me, cause that hand is so deceiving. Is there a law against me, Elise?